So, as you know, my three-step method, three steps to turning your dream into reality, begins with, first of all, knowing what you want. What is the outcome you want? It's like a GPS. If you don't know where you want to go, you'll just end up anywhere. Correct? So first we put the destination. In Greek, it's called the telos. Telos, the end. So today we're going to be working with a destination, a telos, that you want within the next two years. What do you want to manifest within the next two years? You can definitely choose three months, two months, five months, okay? Uh, not less than 30 days, although it may happen. I have this uh, guided meditation that if you do for 30 days, it may happen within 30 days. You got that all in your workbook, if you remember, the guided meditation. See, manifestation needs work. Everyone thinks, oh, I'll, I'll just wish it. Why doesn't it happen? This world is so difficult. Why isn't it happening? But are you doing your homework every day? Are you focusing? Are you focusing? So today, you are going to sit in this chair and share with the group what is your telos, and by when do you want it? There's only a little twist in here, is that you will tell us the telos as if it's already happened. So, this is you. You get up from your seat and you sit here. It is the year 2025, November 2025. So this is exactly what I want you to do here. Hello, my very inspiring person. I just want to remind you to book your seat for my December 6th retreat here on the Athens Riviera. It has to be like it's already happened. It is 2026. I am so happy and grateful that uh, I met my soulmate about a year ago. Um, we're traveling. We opened a business together. Or it is 2028. I have, a, you know, two children. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Tell us as if it's already happened and how grateful you are, because you will be grateful, correct? If your wish happens, generally, I will wake up and I say, I'm so grateful, I'm so happy, I'm so grateful, thank you, you know? So that will prove that it's already happened, because you will really be, my God, I'm making 50,000 euro a month from my online business, from my online therapy, uh, you know, whatever. My book is a bestseller. I've met the man of my life. And you tell us what's happening. And don't worry, you can't do any mistakes, okay? If you, if you screw up a little, it's not an audition for a film, okay? Okay, now, why do I say this? Because in my method, we have ethos, pathos, logos. You, you might have read about those principles. The ethos part is that You'll know when it's happened because your energy is aligned with what is happening. The more persuasive you are here, like as if it's true, the quicker you're going to be manifesting it. And how will you know if what you're doing is true? Your friend, you'll give your phone to your friend and they will videotape you on your phone and give it to you. And if you look at that and say, no, I'm not very convincing, it means it means work. Your alignment needs work. You have to act it so well that you could convince a group of strangers. See what I mean? If like you're at a dinner party, someone asks you about your life, you start talking about your life with ease, right? Like you do now if someone asks you, what do you do? I'm a yoga teacher, you know, this, that. You would speak naturally. And you'll say, okay, I have a yoga school. I have a healing center. You will say whatever you want. Don't put any limit. Your, the limit is your own mind. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay, so you do that, mm -hmm. and obviously when you're doing it, mm -hmm. things come up within you, your yeah. blockages, your weaknesses, yeah. the yeah. reasons why you haven't got That's an excellent already. point. That's a very good point. As you're acting this out, as you're doing this performance, okay, watch in the back of your mind all the negative talk. Like, no. There's going to be a part of you that's outside looking and saying, that's not true, you're not making 30,000 a month, or that's not true, you don't have three kids. Just watch that, okay? And then we're gonna write down those doubts because that's your, that's your problem there. That, that is what's blocking you, your doubts. And we're gonna work through the doubts too, not all together on this session, next session. So don't be afraid, you can't make this, because we're gonna do this exercise a lot, like over time, during the winter. 
So don't worry if you can't get it right the first time, okay? It's a game. Imagine it's just a game. You're acting out yourself in the future. Just tell us, I'm so happy and grateful, the date, okay, the date, and what's happening, what's happening in your life. That's <laughs> And this is for you to review your film and say, what could you do better? And you'll keep improving it over time. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll send us a video from England because yeah. you, if, you, if you're not here. I'll say, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, I'm so happy, happy for him. Yeah. Oh, you look great in that chair. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Excellent. Because yeah. you've done a lot of work on that. Yeah. You know, you're just smoothing out the obstacles. That's what you're doing when you can accept it. You know, when I did my TED talk, for example, like I, I looked at people who did their TED talks. I was like, oh, they're very important. They're very smart. I'm not that smart. I said, no, I have to do a TED Talk, you know? I want to do that TED Talk. It's, it's, I don't know if you know it, it's like a very prestigious talk. And I just made a speech, I worked on it, gathered everything, and I just started applying everywhere, worldwide. I said, I'll go anywhere. So I get this thing from India. I'm like, would you come to India to do a TED Talk? I'm like, yes, I'll go. And believe me, all the way through, I still couldn't believe it. And even my journey had obstacles, like my plane was delayed, COVID was starting, you, you, I was wearing a mask, like I was like, everything's happening to me, this is not gonna work, like it's, why me, why me? And I was still fighting it. But then you know, I just, when I arrived, there was my photo on a huge banner, I was like, okay, I think this is happening. But I just wanna say that even I, you know, who teach this stuff, I had that inner blockages, but I was working with it, working, working with all the fear and negativity from my past, from my childhood trauma, from whatever you've been through, it's gonna come and bite you in the neck and say, you're not good enough. Mm. That's good for others, it's not for you. So start taking note of that little voice inside of you. Write it down, this is your homework, I always give homework. You, you write down all the negative thoughts, and I want you to answer each thought. So in one or two sentences, I'd like you to describe what is upsetting you lately? What is that thing that's frustrating you? It's a thought that keeps coming back to you. And try to really take note of the exact narrative that's going on in your brain, okay? Like, oh, I will never be able to achieve X and Y goal, something like that. On a deeper level, what are you afraid of? Is it, what are you thinking of that, that is actually bothering you? You're actually afraid of. What are the actual consequences you are fearing in the material world, in the outer world? What will it look like? Is it a breakup? Is it um, a bankruptcy? You know, what is it, an accident? What is the thing that you're afraid that will appear in, in your life? And now I want you to think a little deeper and say, now, what would that imply about you? Okay, what would that imply about you personally, about your value, about your worth? You know, like a lot of people think, if that happens, then that means that I'm not worthy. So that would be the intrinsic fear that you have, that you are not worthy. Just take a moment and write down your answer. So just a moment, observe 
how it makes you feel when you believe that that thought is real. When that inner narrative seems true to you. What does it do with you mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, uh, you know, energetically? How does your energy feel? It probably lowers it, right? But just try to observe more where you might have even some pain or some manifestation like an eczema or a headache or just very low energy. What does it feel like for you when you believe that narrative? You are doing very well so far. You have done some digging and found the limiting lies or stories or narrative that you have been telling yourself that have been draining you of energy and enthusiasm. Now are you ready to transform your fear into freedom? That's great, but first I will tell you a short anecdotal story about Socrates, one of the greatest philosophers ever to have lived. So I want you to travel back in ancient Athens. Socrates is taking a stroll to see the sunset over the calm blue horizon of the Aegean when an acquaintance runs up to him excitedly and says, Socrates, do you know what I just heard about one of your students? Wait a moment, Socrates replies. Before you tell me, I'd like you to pass a little test. It's called the test of three. Test of three? Yes, Socrates continues. Before you talk to me about my student, let's take a moment to test what you're going to say. The first test is truth. Have you made absolutely sure that what you're about to tell me is true? No, the man replies. Actually, I just heard about it from someone. All right, says Socrates, so you don't know if it's really true. Now let's try the second test, the test of kindness. Is what you're about to tell me about my student something good? No, on the contrary. So, Socrates continues, you want to tell me something bad about him and you're not even certain that it's true. The man shrugs, a little embarrassed. Socrates continues, you may still pass though because there is a third test, the test of usefulness. Is what you want to tell me about my students going to be useful to me? Well, not really. So, Socrates says, if what you want to tell me is neither true, nor good, nor useful, then why tell it to me at all? As this story reveals, there are three filters that we can pass our thinking and our beliefs through before we allow them to dwell in our minds and cause havoc. The first is, is it true? Now this represents ethos. Consider things like integrity, credibility, and the accuracy of your thoughts. The second is representing kindness. And we can align this with pathos. Considering our feelings, our emotions, compassion, kindness, empathy. And the third, is it useful, represents logos. And under this category, practicality, applicability, facts, and strategies. You have to therefore become a witness to your own thought streams and encourage yourself to think thoughts which are useful in order to keep it healthy and productive. Thoughts that do not pass the test of three, the Socratic test, this elenchos I'm discussing should not be taking place in your mind. Okay? Just imagine a ship. Okay, a ship doesn't sink from the water that surrounds it, but from the water that comes in through the holes in the ship. 
So you being that ship should be repairing the holes and not allowing the water to come in and flood you. So back to your inner story, the one you wrote on D&D earlier. Is that story 100% true? Interrogate the belief or that inner narrative. Ask yourself, am I perhaps dramatizing the situation and overblowing its importance? Am I perhaps generalizing and assuming things that are not 100% true? Am I perhaps over-personalizing, taking offense too easily or even blaming myself for matters that are not related to me? Once you have decided, tick the box below that best represents your answer. Being kind has a lot to do with changing perspective, seeing things differently. So have a look at this optical illusion as it will help you broaden your perspective. In this optical illusion, some people see an old lady, others see a young lady. Now, now ask yourself, is this story that I have been telling myself kind? Is it kind towards myself? Is it kind towards the other people involved? Is that story or narrative from D and E useful to you? If you keep repeating it to yourself, is that going to be useful to you? Now, just imagine for a moment, who could you be if you didn't have that thought? Who would you become? if you were not burdened by this thought and you didn't um, tell yourself this narrative all the time, what kind of thoughts would you be having instead? How would your life be able to change? So could you imagine letting go of that narrative that you've been holding. So how much time would you need to be able to let go of that thought? Could you imagine letting go of that in um, a year's time? I mean, maybe it's something very big and it's a big trauma and you think, I'm not ready to let go or forgive. But in a year's time, what about six months time? What about a month's time? How about about a week from now you'd be willing to let it go? Or let's talk about here and now. Some of you may be willing to let go of that thought here and now. Is that you? Are you able to free yourself now? And lastly, I'd like you to take a moment to rewrite that thought, rewrite that narrative. Just take a few moments and rephrase it so that it is more true, okay? For example, if you had the thought, I'll never be able to lose these uh, 20 kilos, you can say, I believe that I can lose these 20 kilos if I work hard every day do my workout, follow the diet that the doctor told me, I can do this. That would be an alternative thought. So you have to create a new thought in this case. Replace the old programming. Replace the old compulsive narrative with a narrative that is more true, more kind, and more useful to you, right? Just formulate. I want you to get into your creative mode, open up the horizon, look at this from above and really say, what thought could I think instead of having that compulsive thought all the time bringing me down? Feel more courageous, more powerful, more empowered to go ahead and overcome what it is that you've been stuck with. So I hope that that exercise has been useful. I 
have a passion for helping people transform their fear, frustration, anger, and anxiety into calm, confident, inner freedom. And this is all through the principles and practices of Greek philosophy. Join me and the group of fascinating speakers on well-being, fitness, and health here on the Greek Riviera, December 6th, in our one-day retreat. What does manifestation mean for some of us who it's their first time? Manifestation is to turn into reality what you wish for. Manifestation, to realize a dream. And today is one of many sessions. Uh, we've already done an exercise and last weekend we had some homework too. 